Okay, continuing on today with our Laplace transform playlist, we have here the Laplace transform of t to the n. And before I get started, if you want to know more about the Laplace transform, you can go through this whole playlist. We start with an introduction and some other examples. So I'll provide a link in the description of the playlist and also there'll be a link at the end of this video. And so what we're gonna do for this is we're gonna use the definition of the Laplace transform, which I have over here to the right, where our function, our f of t, is gonna be just t to the n, which I have brought over here. Now we've already done a video on just the Laplace transform of t, so like that case, the n value is just one. Some people will do this where they get a formula for just integer values of n, and then do it something separate where they want real values of n. What I'm gonna to try to do here is just try to cover this with one formula basically, where we'll just consider n a real number in this case. Okay, so to get started with this, what I'm gonna do is we're just gonna look at this exponent here on the uh, exponential, and what I'll do is I'm gonna do a u substitution to try to simplify this, and I'm gonna make my u equal to just st, not including the minus sign. Then I can solve for a value of t, so we can just write t as u over s. Sorry, this should be a dt right here, I don't know what I was thinking. So then we'll go ahead and we'll take our derivative here and we'll get our dt value. So dt is just going to be 1 over s du. And so now we'll go ahead with this substitution. Now, so first we look at what happens at infinity here, if we have an infinity for our t value. Well, what's going to happen to u is u is still going to be infinity as long as s is positive. So we'll set this to infinity, but I'm going to put the condition, we'll put it over here for now. We'll just say s has to be greater than zero, otherwise, Otherwise, if s is less than zero, then this would go to minus infinity. Then pulling in zero on for t, we just get zero for the lower bound. Then this is gonna become e to the minus u. Our t value, we have our value here, so this is gonna be u over s to the n. And our dt value is this, but I'm gonna take the one over s and bring it out front, and then we'll just have du. Now for this u over s thing, what I can do is I can actually split that up. I can write it as u over n over s to the n. But this s to the n is just a constant value, so I can bring it out front of the integral and multiply it times this one over s. So when I do that, we just have one over s to the n plus one. Then we'll just rewrite all this other stuff. But then here, when we look at the integral that we have and what's left, then this thing we have right here, this isn't exactly the right form for us to use the gamma function. Okay, now we have our formula for the gamma function over here to the right. You notice we have the same exact bounds. So just notice our integrals in u, even though this formula we have in t, but the variable doesn't really matter. The only difference really here is the exponent on our u. Here we have n, and here we have n minus one. Well, I can clean that up pretty easily. If I just, what I can do is, if I write this as n plus one, n minus one. Now we haven't changed it, but now we're in this form. Now our input is n plus one. So noticing with this formula, this whole thing becomes just the gamma of n. Well, we can do the same thing here. This becomes the gamma of just this exponent minus one. So it's gonna be just the gamma of n plus one. And just like that, we're at our formula. We can write this as gamma of n plus one over s to the n plus one. So with that, we have our formula for the Laplace transform of t to the n with this restriction that s needs to be greater than zero. Now at this point, you might be kind of uncomfortable with how to use this or like, what do we do with the gamma function? Well, we can look at a couple examples to get a better idea. Now, one thing we're gonna do the first thing I want to do is let's look at an integer case. And what we can do for that is we can use this formula for the gamma function. We can say that gamma of n plus one is the same thing as n factorial. And so for this, typically for the factorial, we want to see integers. So let's just look at an example, like what is the Laplace transform of t to the fourth? So for t to the fourth, our n value is just going to be four. So we're going to go, we'll just use this formula to start. So this is going to be the same thing as gamma of five over s to the five but then we might want it in this more familiar form so we can put this in terms of the factorial. So gamma five is the same thing as four factorial over s to the five. And then we can multiply this out and we can just write this as 24 over s to the five. So like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, some people like to have a separate formula just for the integer exponent. So we could do that just using this formula over here and making the replacement here. And so we could say for integers, our formula is gonna be n factorial over s to the n plus one. Okay, now before we finish up, I thought I would just do a non-integer example. So now we're gonna find the Laplace transform of t to the three halves. So again, using this formula right here, we'll have, we can write this as gamma of five over two over s, five over two. But now for gamma of five halves, we can use a different formula. What I can do is we have a formula, really the same thing as this, but we can do it in terms of the gamma function. So we can write gamma of n plus one as n times the gamma of n. And so then doing it this way, we can write gamma of five halves. I can write it as three halves times gamma of three halves. 
But then we can just repeat this and we could repeat this over and over again. So I can write gamma of three halves as one half times gamma of one half. But what I like to do for these is just memorize one value. So what I'll do is memorize just this one value for gamma of one half. And so this value for gamma one half, this is actually just the square root of pi. So using that, we can just kind of multiply this all together and get our answers. So let's see, three f's times one half is gonna give me three over four. We'll have this s, five over two, and then we'll have square root of pi. And that's gonna be the Laplace transform of t to the three halves. Okay, I thought this was one of the more interesting ones, like using the gamma function on this. So we'll have more Laplace transforms in the next video. Thanks everyone for watching, have a good day.